What happens to your Social Security if your spouse dies? Oh, my goodness, my friends. I've had two cases of this just the last couple of days with clients. Not one, but two, or dos, as we like to say in the beautiful language of Spanish. <sighs> All right, so one I was just dealing with today. Great lady. Husband died many years ago from uh, cancer um, in his 40s. She's now 64 years old, 64. She has a financial advisor who doesn't know how to advise on financial matters. Now, he, he's an investment guy, and that's not only a problem with that. Someone had just sent me an article from someone else who's very well known as an author uh, in the investment area who talks about, I think it's 12 ways to uh, uh, supercharge your retirement, uh, your retirement plan or something. I can't remember what it's called. And I'm looking at these 12 ways and it's all investment related. All oh, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> all right, financial planning is not investment. So let's just put it that way. It's just insane. All right, it's kind of like saying uh, electricity is not energy, all right? Energy is all encompassing. Electricity is part of like is, is part of energy. Financial planning is all in companies and uh, investments are part of financial planning. Yeah, it's nuts. Anyway, so this lady doesn't know. And this is not what she's, she freaking kicking butt and taking names in her professional career. She had to raise three kids. I mean, this just, you know, she's ignorant. Again, ignorant doesn't mean she's stupid. It just means she literally doesn't know. All right, so the point being is I'm looking at her, I'm like, well, 64, your spouse died when he was, you know, 20 years ago, and we're not taking benefits right now? No. I said, why? Now, he can make the case because if she took the benefits, she'd have the earnings test. I get all that, 100%, but she, that's not, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. She never even had this option to consider this. So the point being is like, well, if you're going to quit your job and you're going to move, which is, you know, probably going to happen, um, you should take the Social Security benefits. No other way around that. Your survivor benefits, survivor benefits, all right? Because what's happening here is her husband had worked probably 20 years, we don't know exactly, had worked 20 years or so. I'm thinking if he died in his mid-40s, he started working in his mid-20s. He has 20 years of, of income in which to qualify for Social Security. So he has more than the, 10, the uh, 40 quarters, which is 10 years. And so he qualified for benefits. She qualifies for survivor benefits because he died. Now, the best thing is she gets her survivor benefits, allows her own benefit to continue on until she's 70, then cancels her survivor benefits and switches to her own with delayed earnings credits. We'll give an example here in Wright Capital in just a second. So let's go to, you can get survivor benefits. A widow or widower can receive benefits if they're the age of 60 or 50 if they're disabled or at any age if they take care of the deceased worker's child who is either younger than 18 or is disabled, if that makes sense. All right, so my wife, uh, her dad died when she was 16 and my wife's mom had nine children. Now my wife was number six, so she had her and three up coming up behind her. So she got survivor benefits. Now there is a family maximum, I think it's like 4,500 or something like that. And say it's dollars, but anyway, she was able to get survivor benefits based on her husband's record and the fact that she had minor children. All right. Now, on top of that, if you have children that you're of the deceased and you're taking care of them because the children is disabled, you can qualify for survivor benefits as well. Even if you are not 60 or just you just got to contact Social Security. So point being, if you have a survivor, if you are the survivor and you're and you have children who are either the minorities in, in terms of the age of minority, not minorities, you know, skin color, for heaven's sake, people. Uh, minority from the age of minority, not majority, they're not adults and children. Let's just say that. Uh, oh my goodness, he said minorities. You you need to contact Social Security to see if you have a benefit. Now on top of this, check this out. If you're divorced, a divorced widow or widower can receive benefits at 60 if the marriage of the deceased lasted at least 10 years. The same, everything's the same as the, as the married couple, except you have to have been married 10 years. Do you hear that? If you're divorced, you can receive survivor benefits as long as it's married 10 years. Now you can get, and this is why I, I forgot to mention this lady. Um, I was, uh, I, I was, I, I think I was saying, as long as you don't get married after 60s, I, I was wrong. So basically what it is, is you have to, you can get married after 60 and you don't lose your qualifications for survivor benefits. FYI, 
You can't get married before 60. I always got to remember that because my mom, she got married after 60. And I always wondered why she wasn't married to this guy. And uh, <laughs> now I know because she was playing. It was just, it's, she knew how to, she knew, she knows, she knew how to crunch the numbers. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, if you get married after 60, you don't lose your previous survivor benefits, if that makes sense. So let's go to Wright Capital here real quick. I'm going to show you something. Here we got Becky and John Sample. Becky's 61. We have her living until she's 85. John is 61. We have him living. He's going to die this year. All right. So there they go. So John's going to die this year. I just want to show you how this works for survivor benefits. We're going to go to income. Becky's making $100,000. All right. John is making $50,000. And now John's been working for, uh, you know, he's got his full uh, 35 years of, of, uh, of, of uh, earnings. And Becky will have her full 35 years of earnings as well. Most likely. Won't really matter. All right. I hope that makes sense. All right. So we're going to go to network. We're going to go to cash flows. All right. So I want to show you cash flows, retirement cash flows. So here they are working away. I've been working on the railroad. Then the next year, John took a fall and he died. So John's gone. So it's just old Becky here. So we see salary, Becky and John, they've been working on the railroad. And then John gets hit by a, a rail truck or whatever. And he's dead. All right. So Becky's got her salary. That's it. So that's her income. All right. Now we go to income flows and we're just going to have Becky stopping to work th this year. All right. So Becky, uh, oh, sweet. Becky stops working right there. No salary, but she now gets social security. Now she could get social security. Check this out earlier if she wanted the deceased amount, but she's going to lose it because the earnings test adjustment, she just makes too much money. Um, it will come back around. Let's just do that right now. Let's have Becky making now uh, 30,000 a year instead. Um, we're gonna make, I just want to kind of show you something real quick. We have Becky make it 30,000 a year. You'll see what happens to the earnings adjustment. Blink. I've been working on the railroad. Um, what's that? 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you buy me. No, oh, St. Peter, St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company stole. All right, so here there's no earnings adjustment because she's only making 30,000. Oh, actually, hold on a second. So we're still working here. Uh, goals, we have gold, gold Becaroonie. I'm not sure if it's going to let me still get it, though. Let's see. We'll have her working at 64. Let's see. I think I might have to go in here and recreate another thing for uh, survivor benefits. Let's see. St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. Yeah, sweet, it does. All right, cool. Anyway, so what's happening here is Becky's working, making $30,000 a year, and she's getting her, uh, her, her survivor benefits. If we click on Social Security, she's still going to lose fifty-seven forty-two because the earnings test adjustment. But anyway, so you can see here, $30,000 of her earnings, $12,500 is her uh, Social Security benefit from her spousal, uh, her spousal, her survivor benefit. All right. Now, what happens here is not only is she not going to have a earnings adjustment when she hits, uh, when she stops working right here, she will get all the money back that she did not get. So you'll see it jumps up quite a bit, uh, $400. So she will get it all back and she'll be getting it back over the course of the next uh, basic. Uh, so what happens is they withheld 15, about $20,000 of income. And she will get all that money back over the course of the next month over month over month over month. Oh, that makes sense. They re amortize it, if that makes sense. Anyway, so going back down. So let's look at Becky's. Oh, but look at this. Check this out. Let's go. I hope that makes sense. So if you have a survivor benefit and you are making too much money, there's a good chance that you'll you'll still have your uh, uh, you won't get any social. You won't get any benefit on your survivor benefit because you make too much money. And there is an earnings test until your full retirement age. I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't. But let's go here. So anyway, we're going to have her making the money she was making before. I want to show you something. Check this out, man. All right. So Becky's been working on the railroad all the live long day. And she's going to. Stop working. Hold on just a second. Go to goals. We want her to stop working at 62. Boink. Just to pass the time away. 62. Can't you hear the captain shouting? All right, there we go. Boink. You take too long. Get to the point. 
is how I make that sweet, sweet George Soros YouTube money by having you guys staying on board. That's all propaganda. All right, so now Becky isn't working. She's getting Social Security. And she's getting the full spouse of uh, survivor benefit here. Survivor benefit right there, the full survivor benefit. Because she took it early, she's getting it reduced. So the full benefit is not 18682. That is a full benefit, survivor benefit minus, uh, in this case, it's probably going to be minus about 15% or so, maybe 20%, because it's before her full retirement age. I cannot stress this. If you take it at 60, I think it's like it's reduced by 25% or maybe 28%, so I can't remember. But if the earlier you take your survivor benefit, it is reduced by a certain amount of money, 20 to 30%, something like that. All right. If you have it at your full retirement age, you get the full benefit. However, but that's not the important thing here, because in this case, it doesn't matter, because check this out. She's taken John's retirement benefit, her survivor benefit, otherwise known as. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And now she's jumping in to get her own benefit full with the delayed earnings credits. Does that make sense? So she's getting 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 21, 21, 22,000 dollars a year on survivor benefits. All the while, she's allowing her delayed earnings credits to keep going. So her full retirement age is going to continue on to 8% a year until she's 70. So she just made herself an extra 20, 40, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60. She just made herself $160,000 more. And, and she's going to get 8, 24% more because of delayed earnings credits as well. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. I'm just giving you a, a basic example. Now, in my case with uh, the lady I was talking to, she's going to probably quit her job. She doesn't have to, but she's probably going to anyway. So it's like, why are you? I told call Social Security right now, right now, what well, the Saturday. So call them on Monday and say, hey, what do I need to do for my survivor benefit? Now, in this case, Becky would not want to take it. I can't do it at all. Oh, right there. There we go. Becky wouldn't want to file for it here because she would lose the whole thing. Now, again, she'll get that back over the course of, you know, amortized over the rest of her life. It's just not worth it. So because it's going to be reduced. So she would not want to take her survivor benefit until she does not work and make very much money. No reason to give it another year of less earnings if she's not going to make anything. See, she's getting nothing there in total Social Security. So don't take it while you're still working. That, that's dumb because you're going to give yourself a permanent reduction uh, and you're not going to make any money off it anyway. So if you're going to quit your crap old job, by all means, take your survivor benefit and allow your own benefit to continue on. Oh, my goodness. I hope that makes sense, guys. I love your thoughts. I, <clears throat> no one's advising people on this, and it drives me flipping crazy. Ah, all right. Let me hear your thoughts. Thanks now.